Okay, Roger. The, one of the things I found out when I was Googling you, in 1982, you had a few shotguns that you shouldn't have had. That's quite correct. And you ended up doing a bit of... Uh, I did. I've done three years in prison. <laughs> um, what can I say? I was young. Um, I was a go-getter. Um, when you mention shotguns, people might go, oh, my God, he was a, a bandit, he was a terrorist. No, I wasn't. I lived on a farm and we used to do a lot of shooting. And most of these guns, if people know anything about guns, they were purdies, um, they were IBAs, um, they were absolute the tip top of guns. Um, there was a gun, I forget the name, but they were lovely, they were magnificent. They were stolen in a place in Hertfordshire, um, and most of them come to me and one or two other shooters. Obviously I regret for what I did. We all make mistakes in life. I'd like to think I've left them days behind and gone and become a good taxpaying citizen. And I have. You know, you do things in life. Whoever you are, sometimes you get away with them scot-free, and other times, cost three years of your life. That's a long time. How much is a day, in, day of your life worth? 10 pound, 100 pound, million pound? I don't know, I wasn't with my children, I wasn't with my wife. Um, and a lot of people look at the camera and say, well, you deserved it. Well, maybe I did, but I've done my time. I've come out, I've never been in trouble since. And I hope that, you know, that other people, I, I, what I'd like to say to anybody, don't go down that road. It's the wrong road. It's tough at times, I know, for everybody. Don't do it. Get out the next day, wipe yourself down, and try to get some kind of employment, you know, um, that's honest, and you will eventually get there. And, and don't challenge life, keep going, be strong. You know, never give in, and certainly don't go down the wrong road. Now I'd imagine somebody with a, a gregarious uh, character like you, would have found captivity pretty tricky. Um, good evening, old chap. We're betting in here. Will you tell the other bookmakers? Lovely. Um, how, did you, how did you cope with that? First of all, I think for every person that's gone to prison for the first time, he doesn't know for one second what the hell's going on. After a month, you realise that this is your life for the next year, two years, three years, ten years, and boy, you've got to get under, you've got to knuckle down, and you've got to do it. And do it, do your bird. You've got it, do it. And it will be a lot easier if you realise that you've made a mistake. Um, so get on and do it, and it, it, it's not easy. It's not easy, of course it's not. And there's nights you cry yourself to sleep. I've got to tell you that. But, um, but don't. You know, and, and the only thing I can say, I was the only one who was guilty. Everybody in there was innocent. Did you think you come out a stronger person for it? Yes, I do believe I come out a stronger person for it. And a better for, I mean, everywhere you go in life, if you're stuck on a desert island, there's things you can learn, and you learn in prison. Don't go listen to, the, you know, what people say. Sometimes people learn more about doing things they shouldn't. Don't. Think about your family, think about you've made a mistake. We all make mistakes. So, you know, do it. Do it with a bit of spirit if you can. Don't lose your identity. You know, and be the man and, and look, you made a mistake. You'll pay for it. Okay. Don't do it again. All right, so the betting ring, prison or Billingsgate, which is the most hostile environment. <laughs> Very good question, Simon. Um, obviously, in prison it can be hostile, but Billingsgate can be hostile. I had many a good fight in Billingsgate, and also being at the bookmakers. I've seen the joints go over, where satis unsatisfied customers have knocked the joint over, I've been knocked to the floor. But people do things sometimes they wish they hadn't. But we're all human beings, we've got feelings. Sometimes we laugh, Sometimes we cry, but that's life. It's full of ups and downs. Stay on the straight and narrow. It will be tough. You know, many a times I've said to myself, when something's gone wrong, you say to yourself, 
Why did it happen to me? Why didn't it happen to him? Why didn't it happen to him? But it did happen to him, and it did happen to him. We all have good days, we all have bad days. So, come on, you've got to, the next morning, tomorrow's another day, get up, brush yourself down, say, right, today's the day. I'm gonna do them today, by God I will. If you've got that attitude to life, whatever you're in, whatever you do, you will be successful. But you've got to be prepared to, you know, work, work hard, you know, and keep cracking away. That's what we do. If you're born with a silver teaspoon, then you're a very lucky man. If you're born like I was to an ordinary father, an ordinary mother, um, then it's up to you. Come on, let's see how good you are. You think you're good, but how good are you? Right, now I, when I was looking you up, one part of one side of people said you was the king of Billingsgate, and the other side of it said you was the bastard of Billingsgate. Which one was it? Well, that's a very good question, and it all depends which side of the fence you're on. <laughs> I was a porter in Billingsgate for 20 odd years. I was the secretary of the union. I got the porters of Billingsgate, good rises and good working, and it was great. And I loved them, they were my brothers. We were union men together. I then, it's like the, the gamekeeper turning, you know, um, poacher. And I become a tenant. Now you see both sides of the coin. And um, the porters eventually lost their licenses. They were bought out. They got £25,000 each, and a lot of them were employed the very next day. Some of them didn't. I had five porters, and I didn't employ them. I think the five of them got work elsewhere. Times have to change. Unions are great things. But like the docks, the papers, um, sometimes they get too strong. They don't listen, and you can't have the towel wagging the dog's head. So some of the porters might say, he's the bastard of Billingsgate. But some of the porters, who I knew well, I mean, you know, understood where I was coming from. I actually lost a son. You might say, what do you mean you lost a son? I brought up a boy from 11 years of age. His father had died. I took him to Billingsgate, he became a porter. Lovely boy, but he never spoke to me. We speak on a very rare occasion. So, <clears throat> I didn't lose, I lost, you know. Being a tenant at Billingsgate, um, we got the tenants together and um, everybody worked for each other, which was great. Uh, the atmosphere was great, and Billingsgate was strong. And in them days, all you saw literally was Englishmen and Jewish chaps, and it was a great market. Um, I don't go there so much as I used to, but it's changed in many ways. But that would have to be another story. But right now, Ditchling Beacon. Ditchfield Beacon. Ditchfield Beacon, sorry. Tell Ditch us about Field that. Ditchfield Beacon. Bloody hell, you <laughs> sure found someone. Ditchfield Beacon is a ride from London to Brighton. And Ditchfield Beacon is the last hill, and it's one in five or one in seven, before you go down the other side into Brighton. And there's very few people, good cyclists as well, that ever make it. Now, I've done that road, ride three times and I only got up Ditchfield Beacon once, but it was well worth it. It's one of the things I can really remember in my life that I was so happy I, I accomplished it. And I would suggest anybody who cycles, and this includes you, Si, is to do that run. It's so <laughs> challenging, but it's fantastic. Do you still ride now? Yes, I still ride to this day, I love it. There's nothing better than riding a bike. You smell, you see, you hear, I advise anybody, get a bike. You haven't got to do 90 miles an hour. Go out, the things you see. I saw a little while ago, and this is the truth, I saw a llama, I saw a goat, um, and I saw a deer, all eating together, in literally in the same area. You don't see that. If you're in a car, whoosh, you're gone by. So, um, and it's great, it keeps you healthy, 
it keeps you fit. You know, and as you get older in life, you're not as fit as you used to be. So get out there, you'll love it. Now, I also saw that you said that go to Billingsgate every day and bookmaking kept your mind active, kept you sharp. You're obviously still active and sharp, but you only come racing now twice a week. So what do you do to keep that going for the rest of the time? Well, I've got a decent sized garden and um, I enjoy gardening. I think that's great. That's another thing to keep you healthy. And growing your own veg and things like that, it's really, um, when you put it on the plate, it's, it's great. It really is to eat your own carrots, to eat your own broccoli and things like that. It won't always work out, but it's great fun. I cycle, I walk, I swim. I'm on a river called the Wensum, which goes actually into Norfolk. But you can swim there, there's otters there. It's lovely, and the birds are fantastic. So, once again, although you're not maybe making a book or you're in Billingsgate, you're still learning, you're still learning about life and different aspects of it. It is a different aspect, you know, um, herring gulls and things like that, buzzards. It's fantastic to watch it. The kingfisher is a, a blue flash and he's gone in a second. But once again, it keeps your mind occupied. You think, what was that? Yes, it was a kingfisher. Great, well worth going. And I watch fishermen and I watch them how they hook their line up and how they cast and what they're looking for. Yeah, very good. So we talked about your life, obviously very briefly in the time that we've had. Anything you'd much you'd change about it if you could go back? Um, when I was born, my parents were very Victorian. I never went out with my father and had a beer. It wasn't done in them days. But um, I wish I had. I wish I was more close to my father than, than I was. But in them days, fathers and sons didn't hug. You know, it wasn't done. I wish we could have turned the clock back a little bit forward where we did hug. And I did show him that I thought the world of him. And finally, three rules for life. People that are watching this. Three rules for life. Never ever at any time do you strike your children or your wife. Remember that gentlemen, and women can be awkward, I know, you never strike them. Um, secondly, keep to the honest path. I've tried the other way, it's no good, it's no good, take good advice. You'll lose some of your life and it's a short way, it's a short route, don't do it. Be honest, you can do a day's work, you can roll up your sleeves and you can do it. Remember gentlemen, we never won two world wars running away. So that's what I advise, that's one and two. And three, um, try to be happy, try to laugh, try to play with your kids, your grandchildren. Try to be happy, we get old before we know it. Enjoy yourself, have some laughs, go over the park with the kids do swimming, all that kind of thing. You know, work hard, yes, but have your pleasure times as well, especially with the old woman, because they look after us, they feed us, they look after us. You know, you can have, you know, have one wife, that's enough. Brilliant, Roger Barton, thank you very much. The honour's mine. Simon, God bless you, I hope it all works out well. Thank you.